Hello. Today I thought I'll make a little video about uh, managing multiple GitHub accounts from a single shell. So the way my workflow usually is set up is I have two GitHub accounts, one for personal use, the one you can see right now with the username as and I have a work email, uh, a work GitHub account with a different username and a different uh, email. And uh, I, I would like to use something like a single terminal, a single shell to manage both of those. And how do you go about doing that? The first thing you need are two keys. So in my case, if I show you the contents of my SSH agent, it's currently managing two keys. The RAC key uh, is for my work account. So this thing is already added to my GitHub work account. The public key for this fingerprint is added to my work account and similarly there is a dual, ellipt elliptic, dual elliptic curve key added to my personal account. Uh, they don't have to be of different types, I just happen to have them in two different formats but you can have the same key like you can have the same kind of uh, cipher for example you can have uh, RSA key 1, RSA key 2 or you can just name the keys whatever you like and SSH will easily help you do that. Once you have added the keys to the respective accounts, uh, the next thing you need to do is, is modify your SSH config. So if I go to my SSH folder, there, are, there is a config file here which is my local SSH client config. So if I just concatenate this to the terminal, you can see, um, so this is for my personal website and it has no key specification, but that's fine. Uh, for my private, uh, for my personal account, I, I have just aliased GitHub to GitHub, uh, but with an added twist that, hey, whenever you see the alias GitHub, uh, use my private key. So this is what SSH would do from this point forward. Whenever it sees hostname github.com, it will take the it will assume that the username needs to be git unless specified otherwise. The actual hostname, the domain name that it would try to reach out to is github.com and it will use the identity file for my personal account. Similarly, whenever it would see a host name, uh, work.github.com it would assume the actual internet domain name github.com which is the same as above username which is the same as above but a different identity key file so this is how uh, i can segregate these two things and i can show it to you if i do ssh minus t github.com It's going to say, hello, Esranveer, you have successfully authenticated. So Esranveer, uh, as I've already said, is my personal account and it authenticates me as that. Now if I try work.github.com, it will assume the identity of my work account, which is Ranveer95. Um, and that's that, right? Uh, so we have sorted the complications involved with um, the SSH end of business. The next thing we need to fix is your GitHub username and GitHub config, right? So if I do, in your, if you would have run a command like this, git config global, sorry, global user dot name and then your username, similarly user email, like we all run that, right? And, and what the global variable does is in your home directory, it creates a git config file, a dot git config file with these contents in there. there. There might be other lines in there, but this username and email is used to sign, not sign, but like these are mentioned as the author of your git commits. So, I'll show you an example where this can go wrong. Uh, this is my uh, personal account, but let's say, you know, I have a test repository in my work account and I clone it, right? And so let's use our new 
uh, SSH aliases to clone it. I will just add work here. In fact, I don't even need git. I can just do this. I have never tested it, but let's see if that works. Oh, it worked. So I cloned it, right? And the authentication is not going to be an issue. Uh, this is an empty repository with just a readme. And let's just add a new line is added here. The line is modified. Get add readme. Get commit m. Mm, update read me. So if I push this right now, it will successfully push it to the remote repository to work.github.com, which gets translated to. Um, this one and if i just do a refresh here you can see that the last commit was made 27 seconds ago by s Ranveer. so it's still assuming the username of my personal account and that creates a little bit of um, mismanagement let's just say that right like so everything becomes a bit more fuzzy here if you really want to segregate your work and personal projects you can you need to add a little bit of you need to make a little bit of extra effort right so one way to do that is do git commit uh, sorry git config user dot email like run these commands the username and user email that i showed you earlier without the global flag so if i do this um like work dot uh, work at email.com and then work username is my um, name then what it does is as you can see i have modified my prompt so it changes it here the next thing it does is uh, in the test repository itself you can go to dot get folder this is present in any get repositories root uh, folder and you concatenate config then there is a local config here with email and username set as this so you can try this but if you have way too many repositories on both your personal projects and work projects and you have to type it over and over again it becomes a little tedious so what i have done instead and by the way, if you make a commit after this, like this email address and username is going to be used to show who authored the commit in your GitHub interface. So what I usually do in, in these cases is, well, in, instead of trying to have a local config, I try to tweak the global config in a, in a helpful way. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, there is a folder known as dot bin. Uh, in other Debian systems, it's called bin, uh, which is in your home folder. And if it's not there, you can create it and it will be added to your path. Uh, and here you can add your custom scripts, your executables, anything you like um, that you want to you know, directly invoke from your shell. And here I have created a folder called tog. I have created a bash script called toggle what toggle does is it ensures that the git config file exists in my home directory the global config file and it gets the username from that file so it verifies that the username is my personal account and if it sees that my personal username is set it switches it uh, so every time it sees my personal username it switches it to uh, work username and work email and whenever it sees my and if it doesn't see that or if the file was not there before and it created a new one then it just sets it to my personal account so what it allows me to do essentially is 
I can do toggle and it becomes work username. I can do toggle and it becomes um, personal username again. So this is a really handy tool. It's not the perfect solution. Of course, if you have many accounts or you, if you have a different edge case, then you have to think about it in a very different way. But this works for me. And the last piece of the puzzle, which you have already seen is my get my bash prompt changes depending on what my git github username is, right? So depending on what name is here, like this name gets reflected in the prompt. How did I do that? And that is, I mean, if, okay, let me just have it with syntax highlighting because this it becomes like messy. Yeah, so all I did was add a little bit of custom script here, which uh, a bash function which gets the username. So it's like git config get username and then it exports that variable to the git prompt. Um, uh, if you don't know what this means, like don't don't even bother. Like this is this is a mess. Any data description should not have these many backslashes. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I know why Bash has these. I mean, it's kind of an old project, but there are a lot of online utilities that can help you make these things easily. Uh, the one that I use, the one that I used for this, was um, Easy Prompt, and it, I just used username and then extra characters. I think I used. Let me see my prompt. Yeah, so I didn't use anything else and I think path to current directory is what I used and it just gives you this little nifty command that yeah like just paste it to your bash.rc and you'll be fine and all I did was yeah I just selected the background colors you can pick whatever you want but the slash u in here was replaced by uh, just a second God damn it. Yeah. So, yeah, the slash u was replaced by this part uh, slash git parse error and that fixed it. So, instead of having, you know, your instead of having your username like your unix username i mean we all know who we are right at the end of the day you don't have to remind yourself hey this is my username and this is my host name let's use the prompt for something much more useful which is well what github environment i am in or what i mean you can pick any other environment with any other body of software and you should have your prompts prompt you for those things right uh, so this is it i think i have rambled for long enough Hope you guys have fun setting up your own environment. Um, have a nice day.